This week on the show, we're featuring Imperial Topaz, 11 Jokes, Moldavite Under the Microscope Cam, Popcorn Shopping, on Why Did I Buy That, and about 45 Minutes of Confusion. When I met you I would have turned to run If I'd been small But just like a fool I was taken in by you And left with little pieces of my heart Would have turned to run If I'd been small Tell me, does your conscience ever bother you? I don't know how you sleep the whole night through How could you be satisfied for things you do? Tell me, does your conscience ever bother you? I swear you only want to hurt me You don't care how many teardrops fall There's no pity in your soul You're wicked to the bone I wonder if you have a heart at all You don't care how many teardrops fall Tell me, does your conscience ever bother you? I don't know how you sleep the whole night through how could you be satisfied for things you do? Tell me, does your conscience ever bother you? That smile you wear is just a cover I can see the wolf behind your eyes I was only your prey I found out too late You captured me with all of your lies I can see the wolf behind your eyes Tell me, does your conscience ever bother you? I don't know how you sleep the whole night through How could you be satisfied for things you do? Tell me, does your conscience ever bother you? What do you call a fake noodle? An impasta. Let's start the show.
Okay, here I have two pieces of golden imperial topaz. And we'll be shaping the one on the left. The one on the right I'm going to have to find. I know we did something with it. These are, um, I, I, actually it turns out I didn't completely shape this gem. It's not done yet. I thought it was done and I ran out of time. And I was like, well, we're featuring it anyway. Because I'm not going to rush it because it's Imperial Topaz and it's reasonably valuable. Even though it has some cracks and flaws, it's still a nice gem and it's it's beautiful stuff. And I don't have access to a lot of it. I don't pay a lot for my gems. And this is a rare find. And it is available on eBay and, you know, you can get a few pieces here and there. And, uh... I got one and shaped it up, and we're going to watch the video. Cheers! Maybe I'll find the other one, and we'll be able to take a look at the video of that one there that I'm rolling around. This is the one that we're working on. This is the one up in the corner. We're going to look at it on the microscope cam along with a piece of Moldavite. Won't that be fun? Have you ever wondered if your Moldavite is real? And there's a few tips that I've found in my days that suggest whether it's real or not. And we're going to, uh, we're going to have a grade A online look under the microscope cam to see if there's any of these lichitiation. I'm going to look it up so I pronounce it right. Cheers to you. And to this week's Mountain Dew. And Colette, Queen of the Rubies, how you doing? Mm. Colette, a big piece of like 80 carats of aquamarine came on the market. But it disappeared. I didn't get it. I bid like four bucks for it. And I figure based on... Like, ba based on the way that my seller usually goes when he gets a new, like, item, you know, there's usually, like, you know, there's a few of them and nobody bids on them. And then there's a whole bunch of them, and people bid on them, and the price goes up, and then it goes down, and then it kind of gets to a point where, you know, nobody bids on the second one, and then nobody bids on the first and the second one. So I can bid on some, and that's when I usually get, like, that copal. Mm-hmm. Which there's actually some more copal available too. So I was like, oh man, we gotta get to doing that. <clears throat> Which I mean, you know, copal, it's not pure amber or, you know, it's all, it's soft amber, but it's still beautiful. Especially the one with the stick in it. Yeah. So we're gonna look at this piece under the microscope cam. We're gonna look at the moldavite under the microscope cam. We got, uh, I don't know, I wrote down a list so I wouldn't forget. There's so many things to keep track of. I need I need a producer. Let's see. We're going to do... Oh, uh, I thought... I thought that since I do uh, the Why Did I Buy That series, but I haven't been able to make the video, let's just fold that into the show. Because I might be alone on this, but it really interests me how... I shop for things. How do I decide which one I'm going to buy? So I thought I'd kind of take you through that. I took a picture of the popcorn aisle. We're going to go over it. I'm going to point out a few things that went, went through my mind. Maybe you can point out a few things that went through your mind and we can read them. Let me get caught up on the chats. So I've, I've got the popcorn shopping on the new portion why did I buy that but I don't have a card set up for it so we'll just kind of do it on the live portion or something like that uh yeah about 45 minutes of confusion we're, we're making good on that promise um and we're going to talk about Tom Kelly on the show yep because Tom Kelly talked about me so we're going to talk about that we're going to talk about his uh show and his podcast and his clips and his jokes and his comedy. And we're going to do that like before or after the joke portion, not during the joke portion, so people know it's not a joke. Um, 
but his jokes are fun. He's a funny guy. He's like an actual, real, actual comedian in reality. Doing good. And then Jeanette says, cheers, because she's probably got a Mountain Dew, too. Cheers, Jeanette. That's all right. If you hit your microphone when you take a drink, because I just did that, and I really feel bad about it. I was trying to avoid that, so I'm like, all taking a Popeye drink and everything. Didn't pay off. Did not work out. Either way, this is uh, Sunday, right? So we've got, okay, those are the topics. And there's not a whole lot in the way of topics, so we might as well get into the microscope cam because I'm almost out of video. Let's get to the microscope, for, shall we? Let's see if anything shows up. I'm plugging it into the USB 3.0. I'm doing it anyway. I know I know it's just USB 2.0. It even has a white plug on it. Does anybody at home have, and not the plug in your computer, but I mean like a device that has the teal colored one. And I, the only reason I know that is because I looked it up. It's a light blue but it's like a light blue with some green in it. And I guess that's called teal. It kind of looks like a piece of turquoise. Not the blue turquoise, but more like the turquoisey turquoise. Like the, the, the bluey copper turquoise. That. And, oh, Moldavite. I don't want to lose that. Moldavite is supposed to be rare. And I was actually going to fat facet the Moldavite and make it a thing on the show because I figured it'd be really easy to facet it. It'd be real beautiful. The problem there is faceting the Moldavite actually is bad for the Moldavite because it makes it harder to determine that it's real Moldavite. This piece of Moldavite has a stick spot in it and I like that. It's really neat. So we're going to look at that on the microscope portion. Let's get the camera up, shall we? We'll go webcam, nope. Not webcam, microscope cam. But the thing is, we gotta turn it on. Turn it on! Desktop, microscope cam. There's the scope cam, gotta turn it on, gotta push the power button. There we go. Production quality is what we need on the show. Oh, that's the Moldavite. We're going to get to that just in a little bit. <clears throat> and it's greener than that. It is. It's, it's, I'm going to put a light under it so that we can take a better look at it. So there's the super dope imp tope up in the corner. And yes, it does have a crack in the middle, and those are spots. I need to grind the top down more. And But look at the flares that come off of that. Isn't that gorgeous stuff? It's got gray color. Let's zoom in a little, shall we? <coughs> Great color. Comes in off the flares. So I want to show you something. You notice how it has like those like light bright colors and, and then it has like, it has the center, it's called a window. You guys know it's it, the part where you can still see the foam, like through the middle of it. There's enough on this crystal that I can get rid of that window. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so notice this 45 degree part here. If I grind this to be 45 degrees down this way, I need it to go to the middle and be 45 degrees across. And it'll be about right in here. So that'll actually work. 
So I could actually get rid of the window on this. So you guys might actually get to see this gem again. Isn't it lovely? I'm partial to it. That's why I stuck it in here in this smallest box. It kind of goes with these pieces of Peridot. I actually cut these by hand too. Need to get a better final polish. It's so hard to keep it straight during the final polish. And you know, they're eccentric gems, so it's not necessarily that important. But I got a good meat point on that guy. I'm proud of that. Look at that, right in the middle. Get that by hand. Just need to go back and clean up the outsides of it. Beautiful flares. And it turned out. That's Imperial Topaz on the microscope portion. Let's look at this Moldavite, shall we? I'm going to put this Moldavite over here and try to put a light under it. Because I want you to see, notice this, this like striation point here. It's like there was a stick in it. So, in order to make sure I don't mess anything up, I'm actually going to pull up some, some information on this, okay? So, let me pull up minerals.net, because they're great like that. We're going to go look for Moldavite and see if it turns up. It should, right? Gemstones, maybe. Maybe it'll show up in there. Okay, M for Moldavite. Malachite, Moonstone, Morganite. Not seeing it. Maybe they don't give it any play because it's considered glass. Maybe we should look that up. Glass. Glass. There's got to be a way to search, right? Moldavite. Mm -mm. Glossary M E M I M O scale molecular molecule molten. Well, uh, no, nope, we're past it. Mm -mm. We're going to look it up on Wikipedia. Mole divide on Wikipedia. Because there's some ways to tell how. Moldavite is real or not, and I wanted to pull up the list so that we can talk about it. One of the ways is to look for casting seams. Like, if it seems like it was just cast and then popped out, that's one thing. And so that's why I talk about this stick piece, is because it's kind of hard to cast that in there and not break the piece as it comes out. And then another thing is this piece of sand down in here. That would be pretty hard to get that to actually deposit like that. So that's another piece of concern. Let's see if we can actually take a look down in It's that light colored piece in there. I'm, I'm going to zoom in. Then there, I got to look up the, the last thing because it's called Lee something or L something or other. Okay. Yeah, that looks like a deposit of sand. So that kind of. That's another thing I was looking for. Moldavite is cast in sand. It's actually where a meteor hit like a beach or a mountainside or something like that in Mal in Maldive. And they, they, it's called Maldivite. Mold Moldavite, Maldivite. And so this is like a piece of stuff embedded down in there, which, I mean, that would be pretty hard to fake. So that tells me that this piece is real. 
But then there's another thing going on with it. And it's supposed to have those things that I was talking about with the L. Let's see if we can get them to show up. Because this is kind of a cleaved off side. Well, I don't know if it's actually going to work or not. This uh, microscope is supposed to go up to a thousand. To one grand, baby. Whoa, we are getting all over the place, aren't we? It's because I'm like holding it and it's wiggling about. Yep, it flumped it right out of my hand. Shot out of there. Smacked the microscope. Let's zoom out until we can actually see it. Nope, wrong way. It went the wrong way. Can we see it this close? Nope, I think I must have went past it. Or maybe there is no optimum. Maybe there's a problem with the lighting. I must have gone past it or something. Oh, it is just kind of the, the lighting. Let's flip it over to the stick part. This is the exciting part of the microscope portion. Okay, so here we can kind of see the casting. It might not be a stick. It might just be like a, a flow pattern. It does have some rainbow in it because it, it you know, it's got some like cracks and such. And now we're back over to the sand side. Oh, and it's got some fuzzy things from the box. Look at that. Fuzzy things. All right, let's see if I can pull up the L dinger dingers that I was talking about. Okay, control F, L. Uh, let's see. Okay, here we go. Moldavite can be transparent, transparent or translucent with a mossy green color, with swirls and bubbles accentuating its mossy appearance. Moldavites can be distinguished from green glass imitations by observing their worm-like inclusions of liashiterite. I, st I still didn't say it right. Le Chatelierite. Le Chatelierite. And I'm going to pull this up on the... Um, you can see it part of the program. Right? Um, let's see. Chrome. We've got Moldavite. Bam. Okay. There we go. Moldavite. Now, this is apparently uh, silica glass, amorphous SiO2, non crystalline mineraloid. Created by a high voltage power line arcing on rocky soil. That's far out. So, anyway, there are supposed to be worm like inclusions of this. And we will see what we're looking for. Okay, so here is apparently what we're looking for. All right, let's see if we can see those on the microscope cam. Yeah, let's see if we can see some of those little inclusions. I 
I mean, are are we are we seeing them or not? Because I mean, I see them. They're like in there, but I'm also seeing a lot of reflections. Like, are we are we supposed to look inside the the stuff? Because I'm not sure how much of these are like little cracks, right? You know, those are just like colloid chips. Just like the shape of it, chips. And then this is all like the outside surface. So like it must just be these little pieces of sand and such. We need to, you know what we need to do? See, that looks like what it looks like on the inside with that all that, like, gnarliness. What, what I need to do is get a five thinger ding, a five megapixel camera so that we can see down in it. Let me put a little light behind it, see if that helps at all. I need to get, like, a five megapixel because this is a two megapixel microscope cam. And we need to upgrade. Time to upgrade, folks. All right, let me look at putting a light under it and see if that'll help at all. Nope, not at all. Let's see if I can turn the light off on the microscope cam. Yeah, but that didn't help at all either. Okay, I think I might be on to something. Hold on. I might I might be on to something here. Let's see if this will work. I got to change the focus settings. Hey. Look at that. We can see it a little bit better. We ha we have sort of a three dimensional perspective. I mean, I see all kinds of little bubble thingers, but uh, we can't really focus in enough to see the thingers because I see I mean I see some of them, but we're not cl we're not as close as that other part. I think this is going to have to be to be continued. And I'm pretty sure that is always the case with Moldavite. It is always to be continued. I don't know. What do you think? Can you see him? Or do we need a better microscope cam? Or do we need a better microscope cam operator? Just saying, that could be a solution.
Okay, so anyway, that is Moldavite on the microscope portion of the program. And Imperial Topaz on the microscope portion. I don't have more Imperial Topaz video, but I do have some video of this other red piece that isn't done yet. And I'm going to go ahead and show it. Wait a minute, this one. Which one do we click on? This? Um, there. Moldavite. Away. Okay, and then we click on something Imperial Topazy. How about this one? Yep, there's a little piece of Imperial Topaz. I think this video actually, yeah, it goes for 12 minutes, so that buys us time. That's great. Now I can set up the other things I was going to show you. I was going to show you about Tom Kelly. And we were going to talk about the joke portion of the show. And other things as well. Let's see. Hey. Collett says it's pretty. Let me get caught up on the chats here. Honest Gas Handmaids here. All right, how's it going? Hey, how's it going, Honest? Dude, your origami has been looking amazing, man. The, the, those little, like, forks that you came up with to, to fold those little flower ball things, that's amazing. It'd be nice to kind of incorporate all of that. Man, I, it'd almost be cool to get, like, a robotic arm with those forks to fold the little flower balls out of metal. Because I don't know, well, maybe you could do it with pliers or something. That's what you got to do is try to make a flower ball out of some sheet metal. And it doesn't have to be steel. It could be aluminum, but it would still be really cool to see that. I wonder if you could do it out of an aluminum can without cutting yourself, of course. Get some metal gloves. Always having a great day working on some pretty cool with a big old obsidian obelisk. Hey, Honest, you know, you were talking about, like, circles and triangles and squares, and I was thinking, with the obsidian that Colette sent, what we need to do is cut you something unique, something one of a kind, something something that's, you know, atyp, something a little more gem-shaped, something a little more, uh, at, at the very least, like an emerald cut, right? Something along those lines, or maybe like a ruby. R Rupee. Like a Legend of Zelda cut. That's what I call it. Thanks, man. Pins and thread to make smaller ones. Ooh, yeah, I noticed that. You're getting like small. It's like you're using small needles to make smaller needles, and it's getting smaller, and I'll have to try some copper foil. Oh, that would be really cool. Not very viable. Do you mean it's n like not very available, or it's like too expensive, or not very easy to fold? and mold and do things with how about yourself Jeanette asks because she's uh, hanging out and doing great and cheers in it up me too Jeanette ah, a centerpiece <clears throat> okay so before I get to the joke portion and let's see, we're gonna do the one minute game of chess at the end of the show. I gotta make sure I gotta make sure that I get everything cut crossed off here. Okay. We got that done. Oh, we're gonna do the why'd I buy that. Okay, let's do that now. Let's burn off the why'd I buy that right now. Because otherwise I would have forgotten that. We're gonna do the why'd I buy that and then we'll do Tom Kelly and then we'll do let's see. And then Yeah then the jokes and then the chess how's that sound we'll do this one we'll do that one we'll do that one and then we'll do this one okay so I wanted to show you all no good to fold have to weld or solder Still a good idea. Oh, okay, yeah. And you know what? You could actually do it out of, like, foil. Like aluminum foil. 
you know? Like if you got the heavy duty stuff on a roll from the store. And then you could probably like spray it or maybe you could spray it ahead of time. I don't know, you'd have to make a couple experimental ones. Which reminds me, I was gonna talk about autofocus. And where is the picture part of the program? We're going to have to add, okay, top left is an image file plus image new source. Let's see, why did I buy that? source and we want the popcorn image so I wonder if this is the only way I can get I'll try it out okay if that is the only way I can get it that small I think the heavy-duty foil would actually be rather resilient, and I think it would work out. I don't know. I, I'm going to make a card for this, so we'll actually get to where this is kind of a portion of the program. Because I, I do take pictures of stuff at, in the aisle occasionally. And I don't know if y'all have ever tried to wonder why you buy what you buy, but I thought it would really be interesting, especially from the invention perspective. Okay, this is the cool piece that I haven't shown yet. But I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna cut this piece the rest of the way down, and then we'll actually get to that, and we can actually make it a feature. It's gonna be awesome. I'm excited about that. Okay, so I was like, well, why why do I buy what I buy? Why do people buy what they buy? Do people even buy things anymore? And I was buying popcorn, and I looked at the popcorn, and I don't regularly buy popcorn. I can't remember how long it's been since I've bought popcorn. There was a lot of popcorn to choose from. Look at all this popcorn to choose from. And this is a small amount of the popcorn to choose from. Okay, so I'm going to kind of take you through what I saw. Let me take you through the let me take you through the shopping experience. You know, I see the popcorn, I see okay. I get to the popcorn, I'm like, am I in the regular popcorn aisle? Is this where the popcorn is? So I look for the name brand. Because I'm like, okay, where's the name brands at? That's where the popcorn's gonna be. That's gonna be where the popcorn -y section of the store is. So I notice, okay, we got Orville Redenbachers, we got Pop Secret, we got uh the, oh, this Act 2, I've seen that before. You know, mostly I know the Redenbachers and the Pop Secret, you know. Okay, then up top you got this, some of the ones that got, like, seeds on them, so they look a little more healthy. They even say skinny on them. And there's one that's like, boom, chicka pop. And I'm like, is that popcorn, or is that, like, some kind of chicken thing? Kind of, maybe it's, like, chicken popcorn, I don't know. Especially that one that's yellow. Because I think of yellow as, like, the, you know, that's the color of chicken soup. So, you know, that's probably some kind of chicken soup popcorn, which might be good, and I might be trying that. But, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm here for the regular popcorn. So what did I buy? And why did I buy that? We've got, uh, what do we got, kettle something? I thought about maybe the, what's this, Blasto butter? That sounds amazing, right? I mean, who doesn't like some buttery popcorn? And then I started looking at price. I'm like, okay, so... Let me let me think about this. We're in the competition here, you know. We got uh, Pop Secret. We got Oville Redenbacher. They're the name brands. Who's the better one? Who's charging more? Who's charging a little extra? Who's the ten dollar pot? Who's the five dollar pot? Some people want to pay more, so they know that they're getting more. Are you? Maybe. Maybe not. You run that risk. You got to test it out yourself. So it, there's a chance the Pop Secret was actually a little less than the Redenbachers. Uh, I will say that seeing Orville's smile and face on there made me feel a little, made, made me feel a little, you know, a little sympathy for the guy. I want to want to buy old Orville's, you know, but I, I know he passed away. But you know, like 
Oh, you know, Orville, he's there. He'll, he'll make good on his promise. This popcorn better be, you know, I'll just take it on down to Orville's house and, and knock on his door, and, and he'll give me some, some good fresh popcorn. He'll make good on that. Uh, but then I was like, well, let's let's look at our options here. And the big yellow flag stuck out. Two for six dollars. So instead of paying like three something a box, I was over there at the Pop Secret selection, and they had the regular popcorn, which I was there to get. No frills, no chicken soup, just regular popcorn. But they also had this Pop It, and it comes out as caramel popcorn. Now they got the two for deal going on. I paid more than three something dollars but I got two popcorns. So I went for that deal. That's why I buy that. That's what I bought and that's why I buy that. And I think we should make this portion of the show because I really like looking into buying things and taking the time to actually make the video. It, it, it's a little more than I have the time for. Act two, extra, extra butter with ca capital letters, half popped. Oh man, half popped. Oh, I know what you mean. Yeah, you don't want to dry it out too much, so it's got it's got a little bit of that chew, a little bit of that crunch. Al dente, al dente popcorn. Ooh, sounds sounds amazing. Good idea. Let's all go make some popcorn. Someone gave me a pack of that skinny popcorn. It's really tasty. Oh, okay. It, hey, I remember something about small popcorn. Is that a thing? Like tiny popcorn? Maybe I was, you know, it was one of them things back when I used to watch TV when I was, like, still, oh, like, you know, you wake up and then you watch a little bit of TV. I just, I don't know, I haven't been able to do that for a while, but that, that maybe that's a good thing and we're finding that out now. So anyway, that's what I wanted to show you on the new, probably a, a portion called Why'd I Buy That? So, um, let's see, where were we on the show? Okay, I'm going to talk about Tom Kelly, and then I'm going to do the 11 jokes, and then we're going to have the chess portion, and then we're going to call this a show. Just because we call it that? Mm -hmm. that'll, that'll make it, that'll make it so. Yep, okay, so, uh, let's see. Tom Kelly called me a sexual harassist. He says, I am guilty of sexual harassism, and I sexual harassized someone, and I'm going to show you what that is all about. And of course, he's joking, but uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to blow it up and, and play. He's really good at doing the comedy part, and I, I always sound so serious. Okay, so let's pull up this... Um, I'm trying to get ready to have him on the show for an interview. Remember, we're doing the interview portion, and he agreed to be on the show for an interview. So let's see if I can pull up the Chrome. There we go. Okay. We got that. Blam. Okay, so on this video, here's a video of him making jokes and stuff. And I was like... Okay, so here, here's what the, the video is about. Worst possible Jeopardy hosts. And so he's here with this gal, and her name is Lauren Ray. And so uh, Tom's a single guy, and he's out there batching it. And I figured he, you know, I, w I wasn't really paying attention. I figured he was, you know, this gal, and she's got a great radio voice too. But I, I figured, you know, I would give him the old you know, fist slap on the back. Good job, Tommy boy. You got yourself a, a who's the hottie. And so I was like, hilarious concept, Tom. Who's the hottie behind the mic? And I was like, as far as like, uh, you know, Jeopardy host, I was like, how about Jim Parsons as Sheldon Cooper? You know, from that one show. I actually had to look that up, but cheers and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, um, I, I said that, and, you know, it was a funny little thing, but, uh, okay, so that is where I left a comment, and he came back with, I gotta, I gotta make sure I find it, because it's actually, it's somewhere it in It sets this. a tone? 
but I'm also sick of hearing it. I got my name. Hey! Your name, where are you from, and uh, oh. who, Lauren got to do a triple ender. Okay. That's the nice Sorry, thing about having Ophira and Lauren on the show so is the audio is so this. much better. They record on their end. It's called a double ender. It <laughs> sounds nice. like a creepy sexual position, but I Let's promise you it's link. not. Uh, <laughs> though one day we are aspiring to do a triple ender. Oh, uh, let's do it. <laughs> Oh my God, that's what I got my, with, with two married women, my first triple lender. Mm -hmm. you know, there you go, you're speak, all set. <laughs> speaking of married women, to Jacob Downey, who listens on our YouTube. Oh. Uh, who, Lauren got a great compliment. It was, who's the hottie behind the mic? <sighs> That's hilarious. That's very kind. That's Are you at it's the just, point where now that you're married I mean. and with child or had a child, does the sexual harassment feel good now? Oh, that's funny. Ah, uh, I don't consider it sexual harassment and maybe I should, but I don't. I think it's a compliment and like, that's fine. So yeah, it feels good. I'll take it. That's yeah, nice. and I'm it's glad not harassment. Jacob's a good kid, uh, but he's appreciating you for your beauty as you're sitting there in, uh, in a who sweatshirt. Wait a minute. Wait, he saw my face or was oh. is he just listening to, do yeah, you record this? Do you put this video out as well? I guess now is a good time to tell you that. <laughs> I didn't know that. Well, I record like <laughs> one good chunk. I record the whole thing on video too. And I then <laughs> what I'm learning about this show is people like the Tom oh. Kelly show, but people love it better when it's broken up or I put it oh. on different platforms. So sure. I put one video. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> of you talking about Jeopardy, the worst Jeopardy host was oh. on YouTube. It actually did well on YouTube, got a hundred or a couple of hundred hits. All right, nice. A and yeah, and one of the comments was, who's that hottie behind the mic? That's hysterical. I thought it was just based on my voice. And I was like, wow, that's pretty, you know, you're making assumptions there, but I appreciate it. But yes, now you can see me in my Betty Who shirt. It's Who Crew. <laughs> and it's actually, it's my husband's. It says his name, it says his name on the back. It says Matt. Uh, but yeah, so thanks. Thanks for the compliment. No, well, I don't think that's like sexual harassment. I think it's very nice. It's, it's fine. I liked it bef when I was single too. It, I don't care. You know what it is? I never get. <laughs> see? Okay, so anyway, that was funny, and I thought you would get a kick out of that. And hopefully we can get um, Tom to be on the show if I can actually get an interview portion worth having him on the show for. So I'm actually, like, I checked to make sure that I can pin a comment. Let's see, pin a comment, Jacob. And it worked last time. There we go. And then we're going to actually have, you know, the chat bot drop some links and give kind of a, you know, an electrical welcome and, and so forth. The et cetera. I think that'll be pretty cool. I think it'll kind of make for a good interview portion. And just like all the other types of portions we are going to try and make great let's try and make the joke portion great by turning up the volume in time right okay this week's joke portion brought to you by the convenient coin log hang and store tip and pour the convenient coin log supplies are limited Back to this week's joke portion of the program. Now with volume. So what do I have for this week's joke portion? I got a couple of things. I got a bit. I hope you like it. It's about bagels. I was talking about trains, and then the conversation went off the tracks. How much do you feed a small pigeon? A smidgen. What do you call a fake noodle? An impasta. Um, yeah, I should have finished this one out. Okay, it's it's pretty bad, but we're going anyway. Need content. So the what 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 did the haberdasher say when he lost the race? I almost had it. Cause he, you know haberdashers make hats. When I die, I don't want to be cremated. I want to be peaches and cremated. 
Okay, I'm going to tell you the actual version of that joke that I like most, and I thought, you know, it was better just to kind of peaches and to just to kind of hammer it at the end. But my version that I really am liking the most, and you know, when I die, I don't want to be cremated. I want to be rich, creamery, butterated. Favorite. What kind of music does a computer make? Beep box. And what do you call a computer you look at? A PC. Yeah, good old computer. If electronics don't work, change the batteries. If they do, it's because they still have gooderies. Sometimes people get up, get me upset, and I have to tell them, don't tell me what to do and shut your mouth. And other times I tell them, don't tell me what to do and open your mouth. What? I don't even know what that means. What did? Why did the skeleton work really hard? Because he was making his bones. Great joke. At what age can you judge a baseball game? When you're umpteen years old. Why are the dinosaurs hiding? Because they made a big extinky. And bagels. Bagels. Bagels are wrong. No, bagels are fake. Bagels are lies. Bagels are an attempt to mislead. Bagels are an attempt to get me to go over there. You know what the sweetest thing in a bagel is? The blueberries. They forgot the frosting. I need nuclear sugar. It's preposterous imposter donuts. That's what happened. Somebody forgot to put the good stuff into the batch, and then they sold them, and now I have to deal with it. Just like this week's... <laughs> Joke portion of the program. Okay, let's see if we can get some chess going, right? Let's do that portion of the program. Who doesn't love a little chess? Gromies, how's it going? Okay, let's see. Um, chess.com. Can I actually do this? We want to play some chess. And we want to show the people the chess portion. So we have to pull up Chrome. Got it. And let's see. OK. There we go. Let's get you a little bit more of the Imperial Topaz video rolling, shall we? <clears throat> okay. There's that one and this one and chess time. Play online versus a person in real time. Okay, cheers everyone. Mm. Let's see. Are we ready? As ready as we'll ever be. <laughs> oh man, chess. Dagnabbit with that. Um, let's go that way. And then we'll go that way. And then we'll go um, that way, and then we'll go that way. I, I think this person knows what they're doing, because they are way ahead on time. I mean, that is just working out way too good. Oop. All right, and then this one, and then... What are we doing here? Uh, this one? I wonder if they realize I don't know what I'm doing. Um, uh, this one? Maybe? I'm so running out of time. Um, let's see, this one? And uh, this one. Oh, I can't do it when I'm in check, can I? Um, that one? 
Aw, so close. I was gonna castle. But anyway, um, yeah, what should I have done? Let's take a look at the analysis, shall we? Because we really don't learn unless we look at the analysis. Okay, we are looking at the analysis. All right, let's, let's look at this. <clears throat> let's see where I went wrong. Okay, and that was good. That was good. That was good. That was, uh, wait a minute. Oh, okay. When he castled, I was doing pretty good. And then I screwed it up. Where did I screw it up? Oh, okay. He went there, and I could have won. Watch this. So I did the right move. Where did I go wrong? Oh, okay. Dang, I should have taken the rook. I didn't even think about that. Hmm. You see that? I should have went on the offensive. I should have traded the bishop for the rook, and I completely missed that. I saw him castle up, and I was like, all right, let's come up with another plan. Let's attack. You know, we were playing over here on the battlefield. That's where I messed it up, isn't it? Oh, okay. I still didn't take the rook. And then... I still didn't take the rook. And then that just totally screwed things up. Yeah, I should have put the queen up there. Should have traded. That completely changed the game. I was doing great until then. And that uh, basically is what cheesed us out. But anyway, that's how we learn and grow on the chess portion. All right, so now we know that I need to keep on the offensive sometimes and stop just trying to play battle hard. Battle ready. We're winning, and we almost did too. I'm, I'm, that we're, we're learning, we're growing, we're making it happen. Benny, cheers. Oh man, I hope I hope you made it for the joke portion. I had a couple of funny ones. There were some okay ones. You know, we had a lot of stuff going on. It was a pretty slow show, but I think for the most part, we had some great content. I hope that next week we have some great content. I hope that I get to see you all next week. I hope you have a great week. And uh, I hope you make it a great week. I'll see you. I'll see you, uh, I'll see you next week.